Hello, fellow brawlers. It's time for the Fang Olympics. Ah! <laughs> Fang is the newest chromatic brawler coming to the game, which means you'll be able to unlock him at tier 30 in the next Brawl Pass or in boxes after you reach tier 30. He's the second member of the Brawlywood trio along with Lola. He's an aspiring actor for martial arts movies in Brawlywood, but that's not always the way to pay the bills, so he works at the local movie theater, which is why he's always carrying around a bucket of popcorn. Here's some of his voice lines, and if you want to hear all of them, I'm going to play them all at the end of this video. Assault! and buttery. My foot, your face, it's on. You butter believe it. <laughs> Fang's main attack, Wushu. For his attack, he sends a powerful spin kick that deals tons of damage at close range. If the kick misses, Fang's shoe flies off of his foot for a much longer distance, but deals very little damage to whoever it hits. Keep in mind though that his shoe charges his super just as much as a close-up kick, so it's still actually really useful for charging his super even though it won't defeat a lot of enemies. Fang's super, sneak ahead. For a super, he jumps forward with a flying kick. If he hits an enemy, he will bounce off of them to another enemy within range of his super. If there is nobody within range or if he's already hit four targets, he'll land back on the ground. Now once Fang hits a target with his super, the range for the next target actually resets, so as long as the next target is within full super range, he will lunge at them. Just keep in mind that once you've actually hit a target with his super, he won't bounce back to that target unless he uses another super. I also want to quickly mention that Fang does have the trait to automatically charge his super whenever he has dealt damage, so don't be afraid to play him a little bit aggressively. Fang's gadget, Corn Fu. When Fang activates his gadget, he throws eight bags of popcorn into the air in a circle around him. Each bag breaks open and drops three popcorn kernels that blow up on contact or if they've been on the ground for too long. Each kernel deals 500 damage to whatever it hits, and these don't do a lot of damage, but keep in mind that they do charge up Fang's super if they explode on an enemy brawler. Fang's first star power, Fresh Kicks. With his star power equipped, if Fang defeats an enemy brawler with his super, his super will instantly be recharged. I can definitely see some really cool combos from Fang's super being interrupted by defeating a brawler in the middle of it, but with this star power, you can immediately use the super again and continue bouncing off of your enemies until the whole enemy team is gone. And once that happens, he'll walk away with a fully charged super. Fang's second star power, Divine Souls, and it's spelled like the sole of your foot. <laughs> this star power gives Fang a shield every three seconds that will prevent up to 90% of the damage from the next attack that hits him. But the prevented damage only goes up to 500 and any damage left over will not be affected. This is definitely a counter pick ability because some brawlers deal very little damage with lots of projectiles and some brawlers deal a lot of damage with just one projectile at a time. So it's probably going to be a better star power against brawlers like B or Piper that hit big and definitely not a good choice against brawlers like Colt or Pam. Now that we've gone over Fang's abilities and learned a little bit more about how he works, it's time to put these abilities to the test in our Olympics. We'll start with his worst test and then move our way up to his best test, but first. I'm actually really excited about the sponsor of this video because they are one of my long-term partners. You might have guessed who, who they are. It's... there we go. Razer. <laughs> I've been a fan of Razer products for a long time. In fact, I like Razer so much that sometimes you'll notice that I just am randomly holding a Razer mouse in my videos because I just don't want to let it go. Oh, that's actually how I scroll through my scripts. But my point still stands true, and I am really excited to show you guys one of Razer's newest mobile gaming accessories. The finger sleeves. Let's just put these bad boys on. Comfortable and durable, highly tensile fabric right here. And there are two reasons why I like this. These are highly sensitive, like, like you don't miss anything with here, and it reduces the friction. Check how, how, check how fast I can spin right here. Like, boom! <laughs> Frictionless spinning! <laughs> Now, the second reason why I really like this is because of sweaty fingers, okay? Sometimes my fingers get sweaty because, you know, the device gets hot, you're playing a good, hot mobile game, and that causes your thumb to, like, stick on the device, which is really frustrating, especially when you're in a high, intense match. They're super breathable, they're super flexible, you can fit them on small fingers or big fingers like mine. And you guys are definitely gonna want to check out the link in the description below because this is one of my favorite mobile gaming accessories that I've ever tried out. Like, they're they're awesome. And seriously, I just can't thank Razer enough for being such an awesome long-term partner. And for sending me some sweet finger sleeves. The area test. Fang's main attack can actually cover a good amount of area thanks to his flying shoe, but even though his super lets him travel far, it can only deal damage one tile away, and this gives Fang a score of 22 tiles and ties him with Mr. P for 48th place. This suggests he's probably not going to be very good for area control. The box test. Now Fang deals a lot of damage with his main attack at close range, but 
unlike other close range melee brawlers, his attack does not pierce through targets, so he's only able to deal damage to one box at a time. After 61 seconds, Fang is finally able to kick open the last box, so he gets 45th place. The Supercharge Test Now, Fang can charge his super with four hits from his main attack, and whether he hits that with an actual kick or with his shoe, the supercharge is the same. With four hits, he's able to charge his super in 3.1 seconds, which ties him with Jean, Jackie, and Terra for 39th place. The Boss Test now, unfortunately, it still takes Fang four hits with his main attack to recharge his super, even when his super hits. But since his gadget charges his super, he is able to charge his super a little bit faster a few times. He ends up defeating the boss in 66 seconds, which is a little faster than Gale, so Fang ends up actually placing 35th place. By the way, I'm taking power level 11 and level 9 into consideration when comparing them to the other brawlers in the game. So I might say some numbers in this video that actually reflect power 9, and that's also that the rankings with previous Olympics will actually be correct. The level 25 Siege Bot Test. Now, Fang uses his gadget to deal just a little bit of damage against the Siege Bot. Every bit helps. He also attacks with his shoe once before he can actually get close enough to actually kick it. Luckily, Fang's second start power enables him to tank an extra shot every three seconds, which can be a little bit tricky to pull off, but also very helpful. And by the end of it, he's able to defeat the boss with 22% health remaining on the Ike turret, which ties him with Spike, Penny, Jackie, and BB for 29th place. The three attack kill test. Now, as long as Fang is close to his target, Target, his kicks deal 1,960 damage at level 9 and 2,100 damage at max level. At level 9, three kicks deal 5,880 damage, which is a little bit more than three of Terra's full attacks. At max level, that comes to 6,300 damage, which is enough to three shot 42 of the 54 brawlers in the game, including Buzz. That puts him in 28th place and is a nice reminder that you do not want to find yourself up close against Fang. The Dive Test. Now, Fang uses his super to quickly dash right up against the Ike turret and deal fair amount of damage to it. He quickly unloads three shots, and thanks to his shield star power, he's able to fire a fourth shot right before he's defeated. He takes out 22% of the Ike turret health and ties with Rosa and Colt for 27th place. And I actually think Fang's super might make him a little bit better at diving than this suggests because of his ability to actually hit multiple brawlers that are bunched up when they're trying to defend. In all those tests, Fang was worse than half of the brawlers in the game. And in these next tests, he's better than half of the brawlers in the game. The super damage test. Fang's super deals 1,680 damage to each target that it hits at level Level 9 and 1,800 damage at max level. This is enough damage to tie with Penny and M's for 26th place in the super damage test. Just keep in mind that unlike Jesse's bounce shot, it does not get weaker depending on how many targets you've already hit with it. The Assassin Test. Fang is able to unload all three of his attacks and two supers in three seconds. Additionally, his gadget deals an extra 1,000 damage to the boss, and at level 9, Fang deals 10,240 damage to the boss, which is actually more damage than El Primo can do in that time. At max level, he can deal just under 11,000 damage, so he takes 23rd place. The Attack Range Test Fang's melee range kick only has a range of about three tiles, but surprisingly, he's actually kind of a long range brawler. His shoe travels an additional six and one third tiles, which adds up to nine and one third tiles, and that's actually very impressive since it's as long as Lou's attack range can reach, and that means that he ends up tying with Lou for 22nd place. The One Second DPS Test As Fang's popcorn is floating in the air, he activates his super so that he hits the bot at the same time as his popcorn. He's also able to fire two shots before his one second is up, and Fang ends up dealing 7,720 damage in one second at level 9, which puts him at 18th place. The Survival Test Now, Fang's second star power prevents 450 damage from the sniper bot every three seconds, which greatly increases his survivability for this test, and also in regular matches. At max level, he also has an impressive 6,750 HP, which is the equivalent of 6,300 HP at level 9. All of this together allows Fang to survive even longer than Jackie or El Primo, and he ends up taking 17th place. The Reload Test Fang unloads and reloads 10 shots in 16.4 seconds, which is just barely faster than Byron can. This gives him a very fast reload speed of 1.6 seconds, which is the 14th fastest reload speed in the game. And that means you really don't have to worry about conserving much ammo with Fang, so even if he's at a long distance, it's actually worth it for you to kick some shoes at your enemies. The Swarm Test Fang's super can only hit a maximum of four targets, but after he hits those four bots, his super is recharge and he's ready to quickly take out another four bots. By spamming his super over and over again, it only takes him 3.5 seconds to defeat the whole swarm, which is not only fun to watch, but also shows how good Fang is going to be at dealing with multiple enemies. This ties him with Terra for seventh in the swarm test. The race test. Fang uses his super to quickly dash forward for a very far distance. He also has a fast movement speed, which gives him a plenty big advantage in this test. He's able to cross the map in 8.9 seconds, which is exactly how fast Crow finishes the race test. And that means that he and Crow tie for seventh place in this test. And now we have 
Feng's best Olympics event. Then we'll talk about how strong I think he's going to be. The super range test. Feng's super sends him flying forward nine and two third tiles, and that's as far as Dynamikes, 8-Bits, and Byron's super can reach. So Feng would actually normally tie with them for 27th place. However, Feng can bounce that full distance to hit four total targets, and that gives him an effective super range of 35 and two third tiles because of how the bouncing actually works between. It's not actually nine and two thirds times four. It's a little bit different than that, but that's enough for third place, and he's only beat by Nani and BB. I wish I could show you guys this in action, but the Supercell's currently trying to fix a bug that prevents the full chain from actually happening at max distance. Now let's talk about how strong I think Fang is going to be in each of the game modes. Fang isn't really very good at controlling a map, and you definitely do not want him carrying your gems, since he can't do very much without being actually very up close to enemies. With that said, though, I think he is going to be a very good brawler overall, and he's able to 1v1 against a lot of other brawlers. So I think he belongs in the B tier for gem grab, because I don't think he'll be the most consistent for the game mode competitively, but I could see him making some really cool game-changing plays. Fang is a much better brawler for Brawl Ball because he's very powerful at close range, and his super allows him to take out multiple enemies almost at the same time. He has a lot of abilities that can help him charge his super, which is always good for Brawl Ball in case you need a super shot. And I could also see him passing the ball up to himself and then using his super to dash past enemies for a quick, easy goal. So I think A tier absolutely makes sense for him in Brawl Ball. When it comes to Heist, I don't think he'll be very good. <laughs> he just doesn't have the reload speed or a high enough damaging attack for him to really compete in base races against other powerful high sprawlers. And it's kind of nice that he can bounce off of the safe with his super during a combo, but I think he needs a little bit more damage output to be consistent in heist. Because of that, I think the C tier is actually pretty fair for him there. Siege, on the other hand, is a little bit better for Fang since dashing around and assassinating brawlers really pays off in Siege more than it does in heist. He'll be able to scoop up any bolt he passes while using his super, and he can also deal good damage to a Siege bot, and he's not actually too bad at diving against the Ike turret. The only thing that makes me a little bit nervous about Siege is using his super on an enemy, then bouncing off toward another enemy inside the range of the Ike turret, because he actually can't control where his super takes him. Overall though, I think a B tier is a good placement for him in Siege. Next we have Bounty, and similar to Gem Grab, Bounty also seems to be kind of a risky game mode for Fang. I have no doubt that he'll be able to defeat several brawlers at once, but Bounty is a game mode where all it takes is for you to die once, and everything all tied up, or you might even lose despite getting a few kills. He can use his super to dash safely away after getting a big bounty, but he still seems like an unsafe pick competitively, which is why I'm putting him in the C tier. Then we have Hot Zone, and I think Hot Zone will be one of the best game modes for him. Not only does he have a lot of health that will help keep him alive inside the zone, but his super was also very effective against enemies inside the zone, because they tend to kind of gather around the zones and sit close to each other, which is the perfect situation for Fang to get lots of team wipes. His super can also be used for playing around lots of like area control brawlers, like Penny's Mortar, or Barley Super, or Lou's Super, and other great abilities commonly found in Hot Zone. And because of all of that, I think A tier is actually pretty good for him in Hot Zone. Then, of course, we have Knockout, and I think this will be his best game mode. He is able to 1v1 pretty much any brawler, like a lot of them, right? And even though it might take him some time for him to charge up his super with his boots from long range, even then, just one super could be all that it takes for him to dominate the match. He's an excellent brawler for sneaking around bushes and jumping out at enemies for lots of quick burst damage, and both of his star powers seem to be really useful in this game mode as well. For Knockout, I think the S tier placement is really fair. Next is Solo Showdown, and just like I mentioned, Fang is a really good brawler for hiding in bushes and pouncing on unsuspecting brawlers. However, I don't think I can give him the S tier for Solo Showdown just because it takes him a while to actually break multiple boxes, and I don't think he'll be able to 1v1 against some of the most popular brawlers in Showdown, like Edgar, and even some Shelly sometimes. But compared to every other brawler in the game, I think that Fang definitely deserves to be in the A tier for Showdown. Duo Showdown is honestly going to be a little bit worse for him, I think, since his main attack can only hit one target at a time, and it's gonna be a lot harder for him to like sneak up on two brawlers instead of just one. That being said, there will probably always be another brawler close to him that he'll be able to bounce off of his super with, so I could see him doing well in the game mode with the right team comp, like if he had like a, a Gene or a Terra on his team. But without the perfect conditions, I think B tier is fair for him. Now I'm going to show you guys all of his pins and play all of his voice lines, so stick around for those. But before I do that, you guys make sure you subscribe and use Cook Harris in the Brawl Stars shop. I know you want to. I know I want you to. Yeah, so that would actually, that would really be appreciated. Thank you very much. Super Jump Kick Dash! Can I kick it? Power Fang! Dragon Fang! Dragon Fang! The heat is on! Woo! Snack run, assault, and buttery. Free refills on foot punch. Woo! Pop and chop! Alright, you get a kick out of this! My foot 
Your face. It's on. Okay. Challenge accepted. <laughs> it's time for some action. <laughs> Wanna fight the fang? Buttery smooth moves. Golden fang. Hey, enough about you. Let's focus on me. I'm popping off, losers. It's popcorn time. No one defeats the fang. You butter believe it. <laughs> Check me out. I got moves. Fear the fang. Oh, you got fanged. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> that was too close. All right. Impressive. A worthy adversary. You're his fang. Fang it. <sighs> How do I look? We shall meet again, my friend. You're so corny. Enjoy it while you can. <laughs>